What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create this very loose painting style of this cherry blossom up in the clouds. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below these, the canvas size, the palette and all the brushes I believe are built in so you shouldn't need any additional brushes. Now with this process as I always say you need to trust it from start to finish. We will add quite a lot more area of the cherry blossom here and then we actually erase quite a bit of it to reveal the branches underneath. So just be aware of that as we make our way through so don't get too precious over the color placement. And this whole design is meant to be nice and loose. Don't spend too much time on it and let the color just splash on and be a bit free with it. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. Drop a like down below. And with all that said, let's get started. Now, once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is go to the palette for today's design. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here at the top of the fourth column. And we'll drag that onto the screen and that will fill out our empty layer. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to our layers and create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here at the top of the third column. We're then gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna use this brush here. So under artistic, we're gonna use this one here and I'm not gonna pronounce it because I'll probably butcher it, but this brush here. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the size to 18% and the opacity wants to be set to 75%. Now this is of course pressure sensitive. So if we press really firm, you'll get something like this, but we wanna keep our brush really nice and light. And we're just gonna sort of fade up from the bottom, just adding in some texture. So we're just trying to just streak that across the sky a couple of times, maybe a little something like this. And then we'll go ahead and go to our colors. We'll then switch our color out to this color here. So it's the fifth color on that top row. And just sort of very lightly just add in some of these orangey tones. Maybe even reduce the brush size down to 14% and just sort of add in some streaks in here. Some little odd patches of this orange will look nice. And then we'll go back to our colors and we'll grab this color here, the very first color in the palette. And we'll just add in some of these so again just sort of streak and you can see i'm being really loose with the amount of color i'm adding i'm just sort of zigzagging up the screen just adding in a little something there in the background and we'll go to our colors then and grab this color here at the top of the fourth column so the fourth color and then just overlap that a little bit so just sort of now you can bring back in that original color and try to just blend it out a little bit more so just fade out that sort of streakiness at the top by introducing back in the base color so you can always go through a whole cycle of colors and then come back to your base color to then sort of break it back down again. So we'll leave that as it is for a minute. That's gonna act as our background for the moment. What we're then gonna go ahead and do is move on to painting in the cliff and the tree. So we're gonna go to our layers and we're gonna create a new layer. Now what we can do at this point is we can group our background and the actual background solid color together and group them. And then we'll go up to our little empty layer here we're going to go to our colors. Now we've got two dark tones here. One is the cliff, which is the first one. And the second one is the tree. The tree one is ever so slightly different. You may be able to see that minor change there. So we're going to grab this one here in the bottom of the first column. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to painting and we're going to use the Nico Rull. Now this is a really nice brush, got lots of texture in it. And we're going to make the brush size maybe around about sort of 17 or maybe even smaller. Sorry, let's get down to about sort of eight or 9% and we're gonna paint in our cliff side. So really what you wanna kind of do is just sort of bring in a little bit of a cliff edge like this, so a flat surface at the top where your tree's gonna sit on. And then from there, you can kind of work out that you can maybe just run like a, a really jagged line down here and then just fill that in. And we want all that texture so we're not dragging and dropping. We're filling it in so we can leave little gaps here and there. We want it to be really, really nice and loose and add in a lot of that texture from the brush. So we've got these really nice little rugged areas there on the side. And maybe I'll just need to bring that out just a little bit more and then just round that off on the edge. So nice and jagged, nice and edgy and nice and textured. And I think I'll maybe even just block that in again a bit more at the bottom. So there's our cliff. We can then move on to our tree. So we're gonna go to our layers. We're gonna create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the color beside it. So the bottom of the second column. We want our brush to be a bit smaller on this occasion now, maybe around about 4% will do the trick. And we're gonna paint in our tree. Now our tree is gonna go ahead and sort of lean over like this. It's gonna have that kind of lean look to it. 
but then it's also going to go ahead and sort of spiral up this way as well and then you want to kind of join this area down here together so what we'll do is we'll start off first of all with sort of a root line here so a little bit of a root and then another root here on the side that maybe join up here so then you can get a little bit of a uh, little bit of an idea for like a base for your tree and then from there we're going to go ahead and just sort of round off and just get that first flick in there a little something like this and we can make it a bit more jagged and then round off that corner a little bit more i will go ahead and once i've drawn the tree allow you to pause and you'll be able to follow along and sort of match up to my tree if that's what you want to do so we'll then bring this trunk round a little bit more and over to the right and then we're going to kind of imagine that it kind of just rolls around itself on the back a little bit and then just sort of runs off up here so it's kind of like a twisty big sort of root and trunk area of our tree till you get something like that for the overall sort of shape now mine's a little bit bigger than a minute so i'll probably scale it down in a second anyway but from there we're going to go ahead and just simply keep our brush really nice and loose with size down to about three percent and just flick off and create little avenues of branches now it's not critical to make this look a particular way really because most of it's going to be hidden behind our cherry blossoms but we're going to go ahead and just try and just add some roots so that if they show that they are present in the gaps and we've got a nice full effect of the tree and then i'm also going to run one off of here so you can see my stabilization must be really low because we've got all these really jagged lines in here and i think they look great and you can run a branch like this just off to the side and you can see there's not really much structure to this one but just a little bit of a sort of intermingling little area of branches so be brave and let branches maybe run in behind other parts as well maybe a little something like this and then this one here at the top we will just let that run up and then add in some more branches as well so again you'll be able to pause shortly for the final look that i go for but we're just going to add in these tree and branch lines so we'll flick one out here again mine's very large at the minute it needs to be much smaller than this but for the moment we can use the canvas and add in what we need to and then maybe a little flick off from here and this brush is great for this because of its jaggedness and very sort of edgy look to it we can create a tree such as this and have lots of just really jagged sort of squiggly areas which will really help us pull off that effect so i'm really happy with how that looks i'm going to go ahead and grab my cursor and i'm going to grab the uniform option so everything stays in proportion i'm going to scale this down and I want it to somewhat sort of sit on top of that little bit there of the ledge. And we don't want it to really drift past sort of a third in maybe. So maybe I do need to reduce this down even smaller and just sort of bring that in a little bit more and not be too precious over it. So a little something like this. So that's how we're going to sort of proportion everything. What we're then going to go ahead and do is go to our layers and we're going to work on the tree a little further so we're going to create a new layer and i'm going to drag it underneath the tree so i'm going to go ahead then and group the tree in that empty layer by swiping from left to right and grouping them together we can rename this if you want and we can call it tree we didn't rename the other one because we know it's just the background and we'll collapse that down and then if we use this empty layer here underneath the tree we're going to add in sort of a base color to add all of our cherry blossom on top so we're going to go to our brushes, we're going to go to artistic and we're going to use this Taralia brush, there we go I pronounced it, you're welcome. And we're going to set the size to about 8%, that should give us a nice large enough size. And we're going to go to our colours and we're going to go ahead and grab this colour here at the top of the first column. And we're going to add in a big sort of backdrop area, so we're going to go ahead and just sort of in circular motions, just sort of in little areas, just circle in some of this color now again it's just going to act as a backdrop if there's gaps that's fantastic it'll look great but a little something like this and all of those circles then will give you an idea as to where you're going to start to lay out your cherry blossom and all the actual individual petals so each circle that i made there so i'm literally just going around in a circular motion like this and keeping it nice and light so i've got different shades that come through and then once we've done that we're going to go to our layers we're going to go ahead and tap on this layer and we're going to go ahead and alpha lock it. We're then going to go to our colors and we've got this color here at the bottom of the fifth column. You may have seen that jump in, but I've added it as we're going to so the bottom of the fifth column. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is towards the top right area is just start to bring in some darker shades. So I'm just filling in the whole thing at this point. 
some darker shades of color, which what this is going to do, this is going to break up that background uh, filler shape and allow us to add in sort of areas of lighting. So what I've done there is I've darkened up this top right area because our light source is in the bottom left facing upwards. So these left edges here are going to be brighter. And then in any of the gaps on the back of all the sort of circles, I'm trying to just circle in some darker tones. And then what we'll do is we'll go to our colors and we'll grab this color here. It is the middle color in the fourth column. And we'll repeat that. So we'll just go around the very top right edge this time. So we're kind of blending in pink to this orangey tone and then into this darker navy color. And we're gonna really be a bit brave with it up in this top right area, especially because this is gonna be the darkest point of our cherry blossom. So the brighter edges will nicely fill in certain areas where we've got the nice highlight edges but that will be your backdrop. So that's what we should be ending up with at this stage. What we're then gonna go ahead and do is go to our layers and we're gonna work above that now. So we're gonna tap on the layer for the tree and we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna start off by using this color here, the top of the second column. We're then gonna to go to our brush library and make sure we're still using this brush here, the Taralia. And we're gonna make the brush size maybe about 5%. And then looking at your design, you need to sort of reevaluate where your sort of circle areas were. So I've blatantly got one here. So I'm going to just circle in some of this color on top of that area. Just a little bit, not too much. I'm going to circle in an area here. And each circle that you add in is like an area of cherry blossom sort of petals. So up here is a circle. I'm going to add in some of this. And because the brush is set to 75% opacity, it's gonna allow through some of the colors on the under layer to come through, which is gonna add in some nice areas of sort of shadow. So we'll then go ahead and sort of circle in an area here. And you wanna sort of take a look at your areas of circle here and maybe fill out the center of them a little bit more so we can try to break down those branches a little bit. We're gonna add in a circle area up here, a nice big one, and then again, just sort of painting a bit heavier there. And likewise, I'll paint in a bit heavier on this one too. This area up here, I'm gonna add in one here and maybe a smaller one up at the top. And this is kind of critical to keep an eye out for where your circles are when we move further on. So I'm gonna add in another one here and then just some sort of smaller dashes of this color on the edges. Maybe not quite a circle, but just some extra little dashes of color. And likewise, maybe in there as well. So then you've kind of got like an idea now for all of these little dotted areas of color and we'll kind of just link them up a little bit there. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to our colors and start to introduce different tones. So we'll grab the third color on that top row. We'll reduce the brush size down to 3% this time. And again, cause it's still set to 75%. If we start to dash in some color, mainly towards the center of each circle and up towards the right edge, cause this is a darker tone. This is what we wanna end up with, so a little area of color here that wraps around that circle. So if I pick one such as here, I'm gonna go ahead and just dash in some color here and bring that around that top right edge because each circle is gonna consist of a lighter tone to the left and darker tones to the right. So we've got this area here, I'm gonna just add in a little bit of red, but then a little bit more in the top right edge, a little something like this. Then this area here, we're gonna go ahead and just dash in a few and you can see I'm being very loose, letting the brush, if it wants to sort of run in a certain direction, just letting it do it. And then just adding in some area like this and adding in those nice red tones. We'll do the same over here. And because we are slightly further away from our light source now, we can be a bit more uh, risky with adding in a lot more color. When I say risky, I mean brave really. We're gonna just dash in a lot more red in here, be a lot more brave because these areas are further away from our light source. So these are gonna get some more darker tones. And likewise up here, dash in. And you see there, just a little random squiggle across, just letting the brush just randomly flick and just jitter all over the place. And then I'm gonna just, just in the gaps between each area, just maybe just dash in a little bit of red, just to sort of link them slowly together. And this is why I said it was critical to sort of remember in a way where your circle areas are because we're gonna slowly lose them because we're building up all these colors. Now we're gonna go ahead then and go to our colors again. And we're gonna grab this tone. So we've got a nice blue tone now. So we're gonna grab that one at the top of the fourth column and top right edges again of our little areas of blossom are gonna be darker. So we're gonna add this tone in here, top right edges of all these circles. So I can still work out where my circles are. 
and you should still be able to yourself and just towards the top right edges again of each one of them just dash in this color so in these gaps here we'll start to remember that we need to be a bit more sparing as we make our way towards the left so that's the brightest area facing our light source but that would still give us nice strong shadows so in behind these like here we can introduce this nice bit of blue where the light's not making its way all the way through the front area of petal that is getting some light. You should end up with something then like this, and it's starting to come together, forming lots of little shapes. We're then going to go to our colors, and we're going to move to this beautiful orange tone. And now what we're going to do is kind of flip our perspective on its head a little bit, where we're going to go ahead and on the bottom left edge of our circle, so such as down here, I'm going to start to just add in this beautiful orange tone. So just sprinkling that on. And again, because we're bottom left heavy with our highlight, you can make that a little bit more prominent, like so. And then maybe up here, I can dash in a little bit more right on that top edge. Definitely add some orange in here too. And overlap your shadows a little bit that we added that link them together. So we've got this beautiful orange tone now that's going to start to make its way through. And then again, as we start to make our way up towards the top right, we start to just fade that out a little bit. We don't add quite so much but we can just dash it in a tiny bit on top of the blue areas where the odd little leaf is just getting a little bit of love from the lighting. So now we've got these nicer tones that are facing our light source down here and it's facing up and it's just catching on some of those petals. Then what we're gonna do is go to our colors and then we've got this tone here, it's the middle color in the first column. And then what we're gonna do is again, we've got another highlight, so we're gonna add it on that bottom left edge. So we're going to sprinkle in some of this white area, maybe the odd little bit up here that's catching the light upwards like so. A little sprinkle under there. And that's really kind of where we want to mainly focus. And then the odd little bit over here where maybe the light's just at a certain angle where it's just going to catch under here. And maybe the odd dash of color there. And we're building up all these beautiful tones that are eventually going to really pull off this little effect. So we're just going to dash in a little bit more of the white making sure it's nice and bright on that bottom left edge, like so. And then the odd little stray one like that will look really nice. So now we've got all these beautiful tones that have come together really nicely. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hack away at it. So we're gonna go to the layer, we're gonna tap on the layer and we're gonna add a mask. Cause I wanna make sure that if you don't like the way you've hacked away into it, you can just remove the mask and go again. So we've added a mask of all white, which means the entire layer is showing. Now, if our color is set to black, which it should be, and we go to our brush and in artistic we go up to the top and we use the aura brush the brush wants to be maximum opacity and the size we can maybe make it around about sort of the three to four percent mark and all we're going to then do is go ahead and just chop into the edges now you sometimes might not see much of a change because we've got that base layer underneath so don't try to hack and hack away until you feel like you see something different but we're just going to break into here we're going to break into some of the gaps and this is why we added our branches of our tree so that we're just going to sort of break into here a little bit break up the edges and just dash away just dash away and break it up don't be afraid to lose a little bit and again because it's a mask we can go back in later on anyway and just bring it back in if we feel it's necessary so i'm just going to go ahead and just dash away just sort of adding the odd little sort of speck and just you need to be very brave in the center so just just run in your pen very lightly, just sort of tippity tap in all over the screen and try to make it nice and random so that we can get some nice random colors come through from the branches underneath, but also the base layer that's underneath. And we're gonna do exactly the same on that base layer. So we can hack away at this top layer to reveal that base layer. And then we're also gonna break that down as well. So it also has some nice gaps in it and reveal the sky that comes through because a tree is not typically full of the sort of petal area. It's not that dense. It's usually a little bit more broken up and you can see through. So let's do exactly what I just said there. Let's go to our layers. We're gonna go down to our base layer there. We're gonna tap on it and add a mask to that. And then making sure we're not on the layer, we're on the mask. We'll do exactly the same. So just, you'll be able to hack away at sort of the edges a little bit and maybe break them down just around the outside and the odd little sort of scratch on the inside may reveal a little bit of color breakthrough. A little something like this maybe. Now that's not a massive visual change other than that top right edge. 
And then when you want to, you can jump back to the mask for the petals at the top and continue just breaking them up. Now you can even make your brush size about 6% if you wanna kind of chop into it a little bit quicker or make some nice big break-ins like so. But we do wanna reveal some of those branches a little bit and that will kind of be your guide as to say, well, I've done enough now. I can see some of these branches and sort of the avenues that they take and that will be enough of the sort of hacking away. So you should end up with something really pretty like this. That will be what our goal will be. Now what we're then going to do is to emphasize sort of the darker side a little bit more. We're going to go to the layer we were just working on and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Then what we're going to do is the top one, we're going to tap on it and clip it down. So it's clipped to the one underneath it. So it's basically one sat on top of the other. And then we'll change the effect from normal to multiply, which if we take a look at our canvas, it's going to give us this really dark red color, which looks beautiful, but we don't want too much of it. So what we're going to then do is we're going to go to the mask that it's got, and then we're going to go to our brush. We're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush and set that brush to about 19% and just fade out the bottom left edge and let that fade up towards those darker tones. So you should end up with this beautiful transition of contrast from these nice white pink colors up into these nice blood red, almost very dark colors in the top right edge, which to me add in a really nice amount of contrast to this design. So that is actually the petals for the tree done. So we can go ahead then and take a look at our layers. And if you're concerned about your layer count, just pinch the petal layers together at the top and leave your base layer underneath. But what we're then going to go ahead and do is on the tree layer, we're going to tap on it and we're going to alpha lock it. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this orange color at the top of the fifth column. We're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to painting. And we're gonna use the Nico roll brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that to something about 3%. And we're gonna add in some highlight on this edge here. So we've got this sort of swooping line here and we're imagining that the roots and the tree are twisting as they're going around. So I'm gonna introduce some highlight that runs across here. For example, a little something like this, keeping it nice and light, and that maybe just run onto the top of some of these roots here maybe, or just straight into the body like so. And then I'm gonna introduce some highlight on this edge as well. So just making sure that that gets a little bit of love like this, that light source is coming up and across. And then you can also take a look at some of your branches and maybe add in a little highlight here and there, where maybe there's just a breakthrough in the tree enough that the light is just gonna make its way through, catch on a few of the branches up here maybe, but just a few, not always, but just a few. And you can see that just really adds to that lighting effect. Then we'll go to our colors and we'll grab this color here in the middle of the first column. And then what we'll do is we'll make our brush size a little bit smaller, maybe about 2%, and then just towards the left edge of those highlights, introduce some really nice sort of brighter tones that are gonna be really just showing how bright that light source is on that left edge. So a little something like this will really just define that edge of the tree a lot more and also emphasize that lighting. And we can go back in and maybe rough them up a little bit as well. So we can we don't have to make them super perfect. We want them really jaggedy and really add into that painting look. So something like that will do the trick. And you could even go back into some of these up here if they have a little bit of space and add in that little extra touch. So once we've done that, we can then move on to this area here and add in some texture on there too. So let's go to our layers. Now that is everything for the tree. Now, if you're concerned about your layer count, simply tap on the group and flatten it down. But I'm gonna leave mine. I'm gonna go down to the cliff edge here. We're gonna create a new layer above it and tap on it and clipping mask it. Now this layer is gonna be acting as some highlights, the same as we did with the tree. So we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this orange at the top of the fifth column. Same brush, so the same Nico roll, I believe it is. And the brush size are gonna make about 10%, and we're gonna be really, really loose with this. We're gonna just run some highlight lines and just little splashes of color here and there. Try not to think about it too much. Just chuck the color on, see where it lands, and we can always lower the opacity down of the layer afterwards if things are a little bit too bright for your preference. But a little bright edge on the edge will look really nice because that's where our lighting, of course, is coming from. So little something like this will look really cool. And then what we can do is you could even lower your opacity down to about 60% and just sort of run some lines across. And what that will do is that will separate the side of the sort of cliff edge from the top. We wanna leave that top edge completely dark. 
We don't want any color getting up in here because it ruins the illusion of the lighting and where it's all coming from. So I'm just gonna run some random jaggedy lines into here, keeping it really, really, guess what, loose. So something like that. Then we'll go to our colors and we'll grab that nice highlight tone again. So it is the middle color in the first column. I'm gonna keep the opacity low as it was and that drop the brush size down to 4% and just go in here and just add in a couple of random little squiggles of color in the brightest areas. So just to show how sort of bright they are and just add in little squiggles here, rounding off some of these little shapes. That looks really nice to me. Again, keeping it really simple. So that's kind of what you wanna aim for. And again, we can go ahead and go to the layer tap on the layer and lower its opacity down. So we could maybe drop that down to maybe sort of about 75% potentially. That still gives it a little bit of definition, but it's nothing too bright. That's our focus. This is not our focus. So the next step after this is to add in some clouds down here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our brush. We're gonna go back to artistic and we're gonna go ahead and use the Taralia brush. And we're gonna set the size to 8%. And we're gonna go to our colors. And we're going to grab this color here at the top of the first column and then making sure we go to our layers and we create a new layer which is going to be in front of our cliff we're going to add in some of our little clouds so we're going to go ahead and down here start off by just just blocking in some big color and then really lightly just kind of just bobbling your pen around and just create some really rough looking clouds run over the bottom of the cliff just a little bit and that will nicely transition it into the clouds and then as you get further back, maybe drop the brush size down to maybe 5% there and just add in some slightly smaller just wobbly, bumpy lines. And my, my pressure is so low at this point in terms of how hard I'm pressing on the screen. So just bear that in mind. And then the odd little area that's a little bit brighter will look great. And we'll just block this in a little bit more down here. So I'm kind of in a circular motion, just kind of blocking this in again, as always, keeping it nice and loose. So we'll go ahead and just add in the odd little speck here and there. Now, once we've added our clouds, we can go ahead and add in our light source. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go above the tree group or layer, depending on how you have gone and flattened it. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the fifth color on that top row. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're going to go ahead and make the brush size fairly large, maybe around about 40%. And in this bottom left area, in a circular motion, it's going to add in a bit of a light source that transitions somewhat over towards our cliff. So we've got a nice sort of orangey area in this bottom left area. Then we're going to go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go ahead and go to our brushes. And this is a flare that I've been adding in a lot lately. You can leave it out if you want, but I really like it. I think it looks great. So we're going to go to the luminance section. We're going to use the flare brush. We're going to make sure it's set to about sort of 80% or 80 to 90 mindset to ATA and we're just going to tap directly down so that we get the perfect angle so we're just going to sort of dash it here and that's going to be our sun and then we're going to go ahead and go to the layer we're going to change it from normal to overlay then what we're going to go ahead and do is duplicate that layer and we'll change the layer effect from normal we'll change it to the option of screen so once we get to screen and then you should end up with a nice light source there in the bottom left for me, that ties in our tree a little bit more with the light source and everything else that we added all points towards our light source. Now, what I think we will do is I want it slightly more off of the canvas. I don't want it to be in the shot. I don't want it to be in the shot quite so much. So this big area of the flare, I'm going to go to the layer. I'm going to select both of the flares by swiping from left to right on the opposite one. Grab my cursor and just move that off the screen just a little bit. So we get the illusion that the sun is just there or the impression that it's just off screen. And we know that's the reason why these lighting effects are happening on the tree. So we'll tap on our cursor when we're done. That's our light source in. And really there's just one extra touch I wanna do and that's bring the sky down and add in a slightly darker tone towards the top. So we're gonna to go to our layers. I'm gonna go down to the group for the background. And then this layer here, where we added all the sort of stray bits of color, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cursor and use the freeform option and just bring this node down a little bit. And that will just bring the sky down. You can already see that if we undo that, you can see how much higher that looks and looks like there's more distance. But if we bring this down 
you really make it look like that tree is so high up in the air. So we'll do something a little bit like this. And I think that will do the trick. We'll tap on our cursor when we're done. So just a little bit just below where our end of our cherry blossom is. We're then going to go to our layers and create another new layer. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this dark navy here, the middle color in the fourth column. We'll go to our brush. We'll go to painting and we'll grab that Nico roll. And we're going to go ahead and make the size fairly large, maybe around about 30%. We'll bring the opacity up as well. And we'll be nice and light towards the top and just sort of go left to right, left to right and let your pressure get a lot lower. And I want to just bring in a little bit of texture. That's the reason why we're using this darker tone. So I'm just going to sort of come across a little bit like this and then slowly start to transition towards a much darker top area of the screen. It's going to bring in the texture of this brush and to me just rounds off the lighting a bit more, creating that darker look at the top. And now to be honest, the final touch is added in just a few cherry blossom petals that are just making their way away from the tree. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go ahead and go right to the very top and create a new layer. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go to artistic and we're going to go to the Terralia brush. We're going to bring it down in size. We're going to make it about 1%. So drag it down. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this middle color in the first column and then just around our cherry blossom. We're just going to sort of dash in the odd little speck and keep some like this. So some nice and bright, but some really faint. That gives you the illusion of distance. And also, I'm going to make mine an even smaller 1% so I can just add in a few dashes here and there, a few at different angles. Try not to keep your angles all the same. And also try not to group too many together in the same way. So a few specs over here. I'm going to create a bigger one over there too. And just, just dashing in, varying your size of the 1% to some slightly bigger, some slightly smaller. And just, just adding in the odd sort of fall off of the cherry blossom petals will look fantastic. And just a few that maybe just come down here as well. Just maybe a few in front of your actual tree will also make it look like some of them fall in front, which gives a bit more depth. And so I think I will just add in a couple more that just drift off to the edge and try not to make things a bit too repetitive. So just making sure we keep it nice and random. And then you should end up with something like this. And if I go ahead now and pinch with two fingers, we go full screen with four. We end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this design. This loose painting style it can be a little bit tricky, but it's just allowing yourself to be a little bit more free and have some fun with it and just chuck the color on and see where it ends up. So as always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, wherever you are, come and share your designs with me. There'll be links to all my socials in the description down below. And as always, thank you so much to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Patreon supporters get access to three exclusive tutorials every single month, as well as the full catalogue of all the others prior. You can have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access, and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below. And if you liked this video, you'll probably like this one on the screen now as well. So, so be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe for weekly tutorials. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.